in our first video we had a look at the bib, the chaser and the trace clips. And today we're going to do the rest of the clips available to us. This in the middle of the clippers here is the spring tensioner. I'm going to undo that all the way. Carefully put those somewhere they're not going to get lost. And you can remove your blades. Brush off any hair. You might have a dedicated brush for this. And you can put a little bit of grease. So I tend to only do this when I'm changing the blades. Tiny bit of grease. I'm going to brush the blades off a little bit. Then the spring goes on, and then we're going to do it up. Now I showed you last time there's a line. As tight as we can turn it. And then we're going to go back one and a half turns to set the tension so they clip correctly. Check the manual for your own clippers so you know what is recommended for those. If you want to check your symmetry, you can get a piece of string. Start from the midline of his back, right in the middle, and bring it down and measure how long your piece of string is. I'm going to keep her clear of that. And we'll start in the same position again. And yeah, that's, that's bang on. So I'm really happy with the symmetry of this trace clip that we're starting from. Now a trace clip can either be quite low, it can be medium height, or it can be a high trace. And the high trace is similar depth, should we say, to a blanket clip. So I'm now going to take this trace clip and turn it into a blanket clip. I regularly stop and brush the hair off the clippers and then Put a little bit more oil in again. If you keep them well lubricated and free of too much hair, then they shouldn't overheat too quickly. So to make this into a blanket clip, I'm going to just do a smooth line straight up to here. So you won't see it once the saddle's on him. And it'll just be left with protection over his loins and bottom. All the area that sweats the most being the neck and the girth area will be completely clear. in smooth lines going against the line of the hair. So if his hair's growing this way, I'm going to clip going that way. Don't dig the clippers in. Aim to run them flat on the horse and just smoothly glide them up without digging the point of the blades in. Also don't press too hard or you'll leave lines. getting into mane territory now and I don't want to cut his lovely mane off so what I'm going to do is run it as close as I dare but aim to have the clippers pointing slightly towards the ground so I don't accidentally go into his mane. I'll start a bit lower than I need to and then maybe get a bit braver, good boy. But it's important that he stays still. To do this side, I have a little peek over the top to see where I started the other side from and then I can match it up. And I'm just going to push his mane over to the opposite side. Good boy. So that I can get up to his crest done on this side as well. I'm going to show you how to do a neat line. When the hair is growing down, you need to come up into the line, put the clippers in, up into the hair as high as you want and then lift them away to leave a neat line. When the hair is growing this way, it's easier because you can just glide along. Okay. 
I advise that you literally do it in one smooth stroke. Start lower than you need to if, if necessary and then you can always go higher. But the more you chop away at it, the worse it's going to look. So if you could do it in one glide, that's fantastic. And so you see, even with a bit of um, jittering with the flies, we've ended up with a nice smooth line because I just kept going. Now we come to what I call the rainbow here. If you cut into that with the clippers, that's not going to be good. So be really careful in this area here. Avoid going up into it. From where the whirl starts going out, one clipper's width from there and go that way. And then we do the same one clipper's width from there and go that way. In order to not cut the horse here, or rather than go up into it, come down. I draw a line that goes above the gas skin and up to the front of the stifle. And from his elbow up to the point of his shoulder creates a natural line and I just clip straight up underneath this muscle a straight line to the point of the shoulder there but I, I hold this skin tight then there as I do the line. All you need to do is let the clippers just run straight down this line here there's no need to try and draw a line I'll show you what I mean. See, the line is already there for you. If you haven't got anyone to help you by stretching the leg forward to get this hair done here, it's wrinkly enough that you can just pull it round to get to this bit and then stretch it back to get to that bit. Next, we've got to go between his front legs. Some horses are nice and broad and wide apart and there's no trouble at all there. But if you've got a horse that's quite close together in front, be really careful that you don't nick them because these folds of skin here are really delicate, and very easy to nick with the clippers. Just be really careful. I'll go through with you how to do that line on the face again. And the line is there for you from the base of the ear down on the cheekbone here and then you've just got to do a small line down to where the bit goes or down to his mouth you might not be using a bit this is very fine hair so you're not going to see a great wedgy line anyway Be really careful when you're clipping underneath, particularly if it's a young horse and they're teething and they've got lots of lumpy bumps coming underneath here. But in any case, it can be a little bit rattly on the teeth if you're doing under here. And don't dig the clippers in. Aim to just run them smoothly under. Dante's very happy having his neck done and he's only getting a little bit agitated when I get up near his ears. This is only the second time it's been done. I've never clipped his head. We only took it to here last time and did half the face. So I'm not going to push it today, I'll take it up to his ears, gently, 
but I'm not going to take out any more of his head until he's developed even more trust and confidence in this process. If your horse gets a bit agitated or upset by any part of the clipping, return to a part that you know he's happy and comfortable with until they've settled and restored confidence. This is the finished blanket clip. Next I have to do what's called a full clip or a hunter clip. And this is to draw a saddle shape as well. Are you impressed? I've never done one of those before. He looks all right. It even looks like a saddle, doesn't it? The hair can get quite thick on the backside, so it's a good idea to have a brush with you so you can brush it off as you're clipping. clip it's slightly different at the back end rather than taking the clip up to finish under the dock like we did with the chase and the blanket we're going to do a little V above the tail and take all the hair off either side Don't be panicking if they look a little bit patchwork at this stage because once you've finished you're going to go back over it and the hair will have fluffed up a little bit that you've already done and you can tidy up any patchwork bits. It's a really nice saddle shape here for this full hunter clip but I'm going to now change it to my preferred choice of the, just the patch. Now we'll have even less sweaty bits to wash off. When you finish clipping, give them a good brush off with a softer brush preferably because the skin's going to be a bit more sensitive and then you can just go over any patchwork lines and get rid of those. Dante is now in a fair bit of work and he gets quite hot and sweaty. To then wash him off and turn him out in the field or put him to bed in the evening it's much better for him to be able to dry off quickly from being clipped and not get so hot and sweaty in the first place. His workload was just never big enough to justify it before. So you have to ask yourself, do you need to be clipping your horse in the first place? On that note, I'm going to stop here, I'm going to leave him with half a face and I'm going to leave him his legs on. He's not going to any shows yet and I think that's perfectly enough for what he needs now. But from this point you can do what's then called a full clip where you clip out the entire head and you take the hair off the ears as well and all the hair off the legs. If I was going to be clipping his legs, I find it easier to lift the leg up and run the clippers along this part of the leg rather than try digging it in between the gaps between the tendons and the ligaments. It just makes everything a little bit softer and you can run the clippers along it all a bit safer that way. Then when the leg is down, and everything is very tight and very taut and you've got to be digging in. It's a lot easier to lift the leg up and do it when it's soft. You just be careful going around the bony bits. Um, it is quite intricate in some parts of the face. And when you're doing the ears, be very gentle and fold the ear in like that to do down the front. And you can just bend it over to do the back. One final job is to then just wipe the horse over with a wet, wet damp sponge just to lift off any excess dust and grease. More importantly, to get rid of all the clipped off hair. Any little bits that are left, you don't want it left on him, itching him under his rugs. You notice I've put a day rug over his bottom now just to keep him warm because I've just taken all his hair off. Cut for Dante, he's been a very good boy again. I'm just going to show you that having washed him off and just tidied it up at the end, 
you can see all those lines that we had, they've gone. You don't, you don't need to panic. All that remains now is to put a thicker rug on him. Picked all his hair off, so he's going to need to have more rugging to keep him warm. Maybe even a second one later when it gets colder. Make sure you sweep up your mess. Dante thinks it's fabulous because he's gone for a whole packet of carrots. Yeah. Say goodnight.